Okay. All right. Top of the hour. Let's roll. Good morning. Another week of Wisdom Weekly. Excited about these calls now. Almost, uh, I guess we've been doing these for about just about three years. And uh, anyway, always look forward to it. So thank you all for joining us. Those of you that can make it live, it's always great to see your smiling faces and have you on here and have the interaction. And um, we all, we all are, uh, all, we all are better off because of it. So thank you for making that a priority. And um, thank you to everyone that gets to tune in after the fact and watch the replay because you're in the middle of work or whatever. You just can't get on live. So thanks for making time to do that as well. Want to just to quickly acknowledge our top 20 leaderboard as it stands as of maybe an hour or so ago when I took this screenshot. Um, we have four Wisdom Builders team members. Unless I overlook somebody, always please feel free to speak up if I do or if Josh does or anybody else does, Chelsea, Nicole, Marjorie, whoever. Um, but 17th place in the top 20 is Chelsea Clark with 25 points. In 15th place, Jamie Summers with 25 points as well. Again, we talked about this last week, but the tiebreaker, the tiebreaker, when you have the same Achievers Club points as somebody else, is of those new signups that make up the Achievers Club points, who had the largest orders, largest initial orders, okay? So if I sign someone up and they order a Pro Vitality, I get two Achievers Club points. And someone else signs up a club member and they order a breakfast pack, they get two Achievers Club points, but they'll be ahead of me because it was a breakfast pack sign up, not a Vitality pack sign up. So that's the tiebreaker. Okay. Anyway, um, eighth place, Alan and Nicole Blaine. That's us, 34 points. And first place, crushing it again, Katie and Elisha Votberg in first place with 105. And about 24 days to go in this 90 days of winter. So congratulations, everybody. And uh, Josh, I will turn it over to you with one last reminder of Team Retreat. Get, your, get yourself and your team registered for Team Retreat. We have a lot of registrations coming through still, but time is narrowing down. Don't miss out on one of the greatest events of 2021. Josh, over to you. Thank you, Alan. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Top of the day to you. Congrats on a great month, shortest month of the year in February. And thank you all for finishing it out strong. Super grateful for uh, the impact the contribution Wisdom Builders is making and very grateful for uh, another extraordinary month that Neolife continues to grow. And uh, so that is, uh, you know, you compare February to previous February growth. We continue every month. Every month, uh, we continue to move forward. So that's great. Thank you. Appreciate it. But the, uh, you know, the key to all that is uh, Achievers Club. So that's why we recognize that every time. Thanks, Alan, for doing that. And thank you all for making a point to be on the board. And, you know, I know not everyone can be on the board, but I want to thank you for having the courage to set goals to be in 5, 10, and 15. Um, and as you know, we recognize that at different times throughout the month because uh, that's, that's where it starts, setting a goal to get into five, 10, 15. And then uh, sec, you know, the next step is to say, okay, how can I do that? Um, you know, how can I do that consistently monthly to where I earn a medal? You know? And uh, because 15 points is a bronze, 30 is a silver, 45 is a gold, and we're wrapping up the quarter this month. So really excited about many of you earning medals. And I wanna encourage you, go look at where you are. Log into the back office, look at where you are, your Achiever Club points. Take a look at what's, what is it gonna to take to get that medal this quarter and, and go for it. And, um, you know, but that takes a, you know, a moment of decision. It's a decisive moment when you decide, okay, I hear that being talked about and it's just noise to me. You know, a lot of things are just noise to me, to you, right? We, we, we hear things over and over and it's like, it's, we just subconsciously, we kind of, we, we kind of just shuffle things to the side. Um, and we're, we're listening for something maybe new that's gonna, going to excite us or, or um, tickle our brain, you know, but um, I, I want to encourage you to think about that one and come back to that. Cause I'm going to be talking about a few things that you already know today uh, I've got somebody joining me to share um, how they're taking something that they already know and they've decided to uh, make a moment of decision 
Um, a moment of decision for that person happened yesterday and they're gonna be joining me in, in, in a little bit on to, to uh, speak for a couple minutes. So we're, we're talking about, I guess you could, you could sum up everything that I'm gonna say today and you're gonna hear over the next few minutes um, by talking about decisive moments, moments of decision. And I'm hoping that each of us will have a moment of decision today. Um, before we before we jump into my primary topic today, though, um, I want to uh, let you know that we just went back up for a moment and we'll let you know that we are just posted today the gathering of champions on the uh, in the Neo Life Business Builders. And I want to encourage you if you're if you haven't already scheduled one to go ahead and schedule a gathering of champions. And I want to remind you that the idea behind a gathering of champions is you plus one equals time to schedule your gathering of champions. If, 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 you're, uh, if you have a spouse, that's one plus one, it's time to schedule a gathering of champions. Um, and, and I would encourage you like be uh, really kind of make it a moment um, kind of set apart. Like maybe go out for coffee together. Uh, maybe you just gather in the den uh, for a cup of coffee or Neil IT, even better yet, like I have right here. Um, but, but like, like really like be intentional about this and set aside that time to go through the gathering of champions and have some, a, a moment to talk about your business and to follow the exercises throughout it. Like sharing the win for the week, you and your spouse do that. When it comes to the end, share your goal, share your achiever club goal. Um, in fact, write it down, print it out, the uh, gathering of champions. And, and like I, we do every time we print them out print it out and, and write it down right there. So that, cause we know that the science of achievement says when you write it down, it's gonna be more effective. So I wanna, again, I really wanna encourage you to do that um, and to make a moment of decision right now. Be like, you know what? Yep, yep, I know, know all about that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And uh, I wanna encourage you, you might even get somebody on your, you've got a couple people in your team spread apart. Maybe you do a Zoom. If you can't get together and get them on the Zoom. Um, if you can encourage them to do their own, because it's important to help develop leaders and help them take initiative. So maybe you do yours, but then you call them and say, hey, you have your schedule. So anyway, I think that could, I don't think it, let me rephrase that. I know that can really make a big difference in your business. By the way, Chelsea and I just scheduling a time for the two of us to sit down, that's really important for us. So if you do have a spouse, you know, having us having intentional time to sit down and talk about our business is um, is very very valuable time and great ideas and big developments and uh, big moments of decision have come out of that. So I hope and pray that maybe you'll have that either with a spouse or with a promoter in your team. But one plus one equals a meeting. All right. Next, uh, by the way, heads up. Uh, I want to tell you this right now. Leadership call on Monday. I've got Alan Blaine joining me. Hopefully you saw the promo and the Neo Life Business Builders. And we're going to play the new Income with Impact video, and Alan's going to talk uh, talk about that. And um, I am really I'm really excited about that. And encourage you to get your team out on board uh, for that call. Now I want to show you something that I showed at the last leadership call on Monday, but I want to make sure you all saw this. And we're going to talk about two ways to respond to this as business owners. But did you see this? Nothing new, right? We've been talking about how the demand for supplements is sky high, but an architect out in uh, San Jose sent this to me, who is um, building a business, Neo Life business, and using the products. And uh, he said, just check this out. Supplement sales are soaring as consumers look for new ways to stay healthy during the pandemic, up 44%. Um, more people than ever are turning to natural health products. 36% of respondents indicated their use of dietary supplements has increased. 39% say they will continue to take supplements well into the future. And uh, so all good good news here for our business. But um, let me stop sharing that for a moment. How do we, how do we respond to that? Like, what do we, what do, we do about that? Uh, and I, I want to suggest that there's A, B, or C. Your response to that could be A, B, or C. Uh, get excited about selling more products. That's A. B. You're excited about sharing the business. You go, oh my goodness, like if sales are up and all that, you know, I need to be, I need to get diligent and get uh, intentional about recruiting more promoters. Um, or C, what's C? 
both, both A and B. And that's how I feel, right? I'm excited about more club members than ever. Um, I'm most excited when I see that about promoters. Like when I see that article, that's the first thing I think about. I think about, hey, we need to share this. This is exciting. Our industry is hotter than ever. We need to get more promoters. And so that's where um, I'm very excited about uh, Monday's leadership call with Alan Blaine and talking about this new video that he's worked so hard at and, uh, and, and how that tool can help us to capitalize in, on a market that is red, red hot. So, you know, it's your choice how you respond, but I hope that, um, you know, I'd love to see many of you feeling like I do that B is that you get really excited about it, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you're C and C, that both, you know, we're gonna get both, but you're gonna be really intentional about B. And so um, how we can go about that, you know, Alan's gonna talk on the, on the business opportunity video. We're gonna play that on the leadership call. Um, but speaking of decisive moments, uh, I, I wanna talk about, I wanna see if we have our speaker on yet, because he had, yeah, we do. Okay, so I'm going to bring him up in a few minutes, and then I'm going to finish it. But you heard me interview, you heard me interview Nada and Chelsea on Monday, and I was kind of conflicted about what I was going to talk about this today because there's another topic that I'm really excited to get into to, to get into. But I felt like at the end of the day that we really need to have some more discussion about Zoom. And you might be saying, well, you felt that way, but Josh, I've heard enough on it. <laughs> Maybe, but bear with me here. Um, thank you for, for joining us today. I, I think we really do need to talk a little bit more about Zoom because I am absolutely convinced that there is a lot of room for the Wisdom Builder team to really grow and how we use Zoom and not just hearing it, but making moments of decision to do something about it. And so we're gonna hear from somebody in a few minutes who's made that moment of decision and it's gonna change their business. And I'm confident of that. And when you hear about Zoom, I wanna remind you, don't just think about 30 minute health talks like, like you've seen me do and Alan do and Chelsea do and others. Also think about, like I've said before, it could be just simply one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom showing a catalog. It could be one-on-one -on -one playing the new income um, with impact video, right? It could be, it's just, using Zoom, but anytime that you can use Zoom to get, you can have a Zoom meeting or even a coffee meeting and you can have somebody show up with their best friend or show up with their mother or show up with their spouse, that's always better, right? Always better. So two, three, great. But start where you're at. Like even a one-on-one -on one's not bad at all. And I'm really excited because we're able to do so much more right now, as you know, as you've been hearing about, I mean, even a one-on-one -on -one coffee in the past could take easily over an hour, two hours for that. And you can be intentional about doing that um, in a much less time, much less expense over, over a Zoom meeting. And, um, you know, Nada and Chelsea both spoke this past week about it because they've both had big breakthroughs with that. Nada using Zoom is nothing new, but she's had a major breakthrough in not only having her reg regularly scheduled Zooms, as you heard her talk about, but actually showing, helping club members schedule them, promoters schedule them. And I'm going to do something on the whiteboard here in a few minutes that I think is going to help remind us all of how powerful a grassroots approach to using Zoom can be. So I'm going to grab, a, grab our whiteboard over Zoom that I have not used very much, and we're gonna have a little fun with it together. Um, but first, let's hear from our, our guest that's gonna jump in and uh, share with us their moment of decision. Um, and it reminds me, as David Clark comes on, it reminds me of Dr. Seuss. He said, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. And I, I hope when you hear that quote, like, think about that. That gets me fired, really gets me fired up. And it always has the idea of freedom. And David, I know you love freedom too. I know you're like me. We both get fired up about that. I mean, I, I don't like taking it for granted. We're not born into a communist country like so many other people that don't have any choices. Like, we got freedom, freedom to choose. So, David, share with us uh, about your moment of decision you taken advantage of this freedom to choose and do something with information and act on it. What's 
what are you choosing to do? Tell us a little bit about this uh, process in your mind and why you're excited about your new plan of action and commitment. Yeah, um, well, I appreciate you um, pushing me uh, to, to do more um, with my time. Um, I mean, I stay busy, but anyways, you push me to kind of step up. And so I'm going to commit to, you know, doing three Zoom calls every week, even though we're in session at the Capitol um, and very busy, but I'm going to make it work no matter what uh, to have three Zoom calls in my downline or just myself. If I have to go drag out a colleague out of the house chamber, you know, um, to do a Zoom call, I'll do it. So, um, yeah, I'm committed. And, and actually, this is... I've actually never done a Zoom call, even though some of my downline do. I've just, I don't know, just busy. Um, I'll do one-on-one -on -one meetings, but I just have never jumped on to the Zoom meetings and actually setting one up myself. So I'm going to do that. And I, I mean, I, I think it's going to show a lot of results. So I'm committed. So I'm going to do three a week, no matter what. Even That's if awesome, you know, it's David. late at night or on the weekends, but either way, I'm going to make it happen. Either way, you're going to get it done. And how do you feel about that, David? After we got on the phone together um, and you downloaded the PowerPoint, you know, on your laptop, and then um, you made this decision and you've got accountability, you told everybody about it. How do you feel? Do you feel like you've got a much better chance of succeeding and getting where you want to go in the business? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, after you encouraging me and um, challenging me, um, you know, I don't know why, I mean, I've not committed in this way, but you know, I'm going to do it. And, and I know there's no way, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to go up, um, you know, it's just dragging my feet um, saying I have so much on my plate, which I do, but I definitely have more time that I, I that I could give and I can make the time and I'm going to do that. And uh, I know it's going to um, add my downline, add my PV and, most of all, it's going to change lives. So that's awesome. I'm excited. Have you made a couple of uh, reach outs yet? Um, you don't have to go into detail if you don't want to, but have you had a chance to start uh, actually taking action on reaching out? Yeah, to yes. Yeah. Um, I've made a, multiple calls in between the votes down here this morning. So, um, but my goal is to lock the dates into uh, today by this evening and be, be ready to rock and roll starting next week doing my three uh, Zoom calls. So um, but awesome. either way, I, I mean, if not by tomorrow, guaranteed, I'm, I'm going to make sure I have locked in the three times for my Zoom calls, have, have it set up and start sending out the links. Fantastic. And yesterday you, you registered, you got your Zoom account set up. You paid for that. That's right. That's awesome. So, I'm kind of excited. Of, well, David, appreciate the challenge, you Josh. thank you for sharing that. See so y'all, I mean, doesn't isn't that encouraging? You know, so there's somebody on here that I think is, I know many of you are already doing it, but there's there's somebody, if not multiple people who are just hearing David share that and encourages you to, to, to take action and just go do it. And remember, it could be a one-on-one. -on -one. It could be a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, you can start as casual as you want. I think the important thing is just to do something. You know, David's talked about doing it, but you know, it helped out when I said, well, all right, David, go to Neo Life Business Builders and go to the Zoom unit, click on that, and, and download that. And so he did it. He's looking at it. Okay, got that. He goes to Zoom, you know, and he, and he goes ahead and he clicks on. He says, now, which, which one is it? He gets it, puts his credit card in, gets it set up. And then uh, he gets off the phone with me and he's going to go. He starts reaching out to, to people to, to host them. So to, the moment of decision, right? David's been saying, I need to do it. I want to do it. But we just got on the phone and it's like, okay, are we going to do it or are we not going to do it? It's your business. It's totally up to you. But he's a very busy man. But you know what I've realized? Everybody has 24 hours in a day. Everybody does. I mean, it's very elementary, right? But it's still powerful. Everyone has 24 hours in a day. You have 24 hours in a day. How are you going to use those 24 hours? How is your team going to use their 24 hours? And what I've discovered is either you're going to, you're going to, uh, lead your team by example, and you're going to be intentional and follow up with them and say, hey, how's it going like I did with David? Now, should I have done it sooner with David? Yes. Okay, but that's not, the point is that what should I have done? The point is, let, let's not beat ourselves up with what we should have done. Let's just do today, right? So maybe you call your team and say, hey, you know, what are your goals? What are, where would you like to go with this business? All right, how can I help you? Let's get this, this set up. Let's, let me show you, you know, the catalog is in the back office. Let's, why don't you go there right now? You're re under resources, 
click on that catalog, open that up. All right, now you're going to share that. And the time spent, if you need to work with them to show them, get on Zoom and show them how to go set up their Zoom account, it's worth it because it's about le it, it, leveraging yourself in order to maximize your impact. It slows you down at first teaching your kids how to, how to help out in the kitchen. It shows, slows you down at first teaching a promoter how to do Zoom. But once they start doing it, it takes off. Okay, so back to that Dr. Seuss quote again. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you steer yourself in any direction you choose. So the point, the, 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 the encouragement there that, that I have for you today is you have to choose what are you gonna do? Okay, and let's take a look at why you must do this and let's, let's um, pull up the whiteboard. And as I'm doing that, I wanna tell you a story as I'm pulling up the whiteboard, a story of Sarah Blakely. Sarah Blakely is the youngest self-made female billionaire, at least she was a few years ago, on the Forbes list. And I was inspired by her for a lot of reasons, um, two that are very, re very relevant to our conversation today. And you probably heard me actually talk about it. And, and you know, if hopefully um, you're like me and you can use to hear things multiple times. So here we go again. So Sarah Blakely said that her dad was always asking her every night, her and her brother, what did you fail at today? What did you fail at today? So failing forward. I mean, that really encouraged me. And the second thing she said was that, she sold, I think it was copiers or fax machines down in Florida in the blazing heat, you know, talking about the summer and how hot it can be. And she's out there, first of all, making tons of phone calls to try to schedule appointments to sell these, let's call them fax machines, you know. And then she had to set up all of these appointments throughout the day. And I have a friend who sells copiers. And when I've heard him talk about how many phone calls he has to make to sell copiers and then how many appointments he has, it makes a day. It makes it makes our full time promoters look like they're part time. It you know I mean it is it is so amazing what we can you know what we think is a like a big deal in this business. We can get by with doing very very little. So like David doing three zooms. Think about that. That's less than three hours a week. You if he does them in thirty minutes, that's an hour and a half. And then he said in between his appointments, he's reaching out, excuse me, a boats. When he had some downtime on the house floor, he was texting people. Chelsea said on Monday that because she's intentional on Zoom setup, she'll be standing in line in the grocery store, redeeming the moment and inviting people because she has a plan. And so things fall in place once she's made a decision and has a plan in place. Now she's inviting people. Now she's doing more action, more consistency. So, so. I guess what I want to say is, you know, let's be challenged. You might ask salespeople that you know um, in your life and say, how many appointments are you having? How many phone calls are you making? And then compare that to what you're doing. And it might really challenge you like it has me. So, okay, here's the whiteboard. Here we go. Whiteboard up. Everybody see that? Okay, everybody see that? Nod. Yes. Cool. All right, so here's what's really exciting about you doing one-on-one -on -one Zooms or having three or four people on a Zoom, okay? Here's where it gets really exciting. Let's say you are a, okay, we're gonna draw. Okay, so fill in the blank here. Let's say this person has 4,000 points, but maybe put yourself in this equation. I mean, for the point, of our conversation today, you could have 90 points with a breakfast pack and have one customer underneath you with a pro vitality. Okay. You can build from there. Okay. But let's pretend this person, they're a director and they would like to go to Grand Cayman Islands this fall. And maybe they have somebody here with a thousand. Okay. And they're like, you know, I got the senior manager just happy to be there. Can't get them to move and do anything else. I've got somebody else here with 90 points. I've got somebody else here with, what, like my lines, uh, 34. Like they're just on a pro vitality, okay? Now, first, you gotta somehow, you know, we all think a little bit different, but we've got to first begin to dream about what's possible. We gotta try to imagine and get excited about how this thing can begin to multiply for us if we'll do this. Okay, so 
So let's say we, we, we call this, this person, let's say with the 34 points, it's just a member. Okay, this person is just a member and we get them to do a Zoom. And maybe all we do is, remember I've told you one of the most powerful ways to get people to let you um, do a Zoom with them is to say, hey, um, my wife and I, and by the way, this is in my video on how to get referrals. My wife and I are focused on expanding our business through referrals, or I'm focused on expanding my business through referrals of customers who already know and use our products. And I know that you know and use our products. I know you, in fact, I know you, you, know, you love the products. I want to thank you for being our customer. I want to ask you, would you be open to hosting a Zoom? Um, that's how we're expanding our business. And, and two, not only will it help me, but I can help you get your products for free. Now, I never know which of those two things is going to motivate people. Is it going to be getting their getting their products for free or is it going to be doing me a favor or is it both? A lot of times it's both. They'll tell their friends they're doing it for you. They'll tell themselves they want to get three for free, <laughs> right? So they'll tell their friend, my friend asked me to, to host this. You know, you know what I'm talking about, those Tupperware parties and all those things. People host them because their friend asked them to do it and they get some free product and they tell everybody, hey, I'm doing this for so-and-so, my friend. Do you sell the products? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just doing this for my friend. You know, my friend asked me to host this, you know, and yeah, I get some free products. So it's so important that you are not afraid and you're not shy about asking them to host it. Because again, they like that excuse. I was talking to somebody this past week who's, um, and I wish I remember who it was. And we were talking about this and they said, oh yeah, totally. Like totally. That's how I would do it. I do it for a friend and I would use that excuse. But free product sounds great. So anyway, so now you get on there and you could just play the two videos, you know, the the five key criteria, the five key criteria solution. Ask them to tell their little story at the beginning, and this is what I've discovered. If you'll do that, and I did this to get the Sapphire Director, it wasn't with Zoom, but I had to drive to people's home, long ways, play the video in their home. I did nothing impressive. I just played the video and then I'd ask them where they see themselves getting started. And I'd always ask them to have one person there when I came over. So I could only at most get one person started extra beyond them. But in a Zoom, you could have two or three easily. Here's something to write down. Who do you know from church? Think about what you know about them. Who do you know? Who do you love and care about? Is it a dear friend from church? Your mother, a family member you care about? But you ask them to just to hop on for 30 minutes and we'll share with them the five biggest missing, uh, five biggest deficiency linked to early death, according to a 28 year global diet study, right? Five, five biggest deficiencies. You, you could do it. You know, you, you, if you have a different spin on that, different way, people are doing it different ways. Um, you can, that, that's not really the point. The point is they're doing it for you. So anyway, now let's, let's, uh, let's develop this out real quick. So all of a sudden now, this person, let's say, gets started for 34. Let's say this person gets a, a breakfast pack. Let's say this person gets zero. <laughs> um, and, and now, what are we going to do with this person? Now, we're going to tell this person, we're going to get excited about three for free and what can happen. And we're going to see if they can host. Now we're in a habit. Now we develop a rhythm. And we're going to see if this person will host a Zoom for 30 minutes at 9 p.m. after the kids are in bed. And uh, you're just going to go through and present the catalog or the PowerPoint or show the videos, whichever you choose. And I just want to remind you, the simpler you do this thing, the better. Nobody expects you to be the expert unless you say you are. You're just sharing some information that someone shared with you that changed your life, right? You're not trying to be the expert. You're not saying you're the expert. You're saying the company has the experts and you're just saying, check this out. This breakfast pack has really made a difference. I can't explain all the science behind it, but I can, you know, here's some of the, here's some of the facts about it. It's changed my life. I encourage you to try it yourself, right? And then now imagine what begins to happen. This person now is 34 plus 34 is uh, 68 plus 90 is 158. And, uh, and then let's see. Now, here's the thing is, you just, and this is exactly how I got started with the mailman and the UPS driver, except I didn't have Zoom to speed this along. But you just keep going down here and you try to go as deep as you can doing Zooms. Now, let me, let me say this. This club member right here, or this, let's say this club member with 90 points, they're probably not going to invite people to Alan Blaine's weekly Zoom. They're not going to. 
Chances are, if you say, hey, we're having a big weekly Zoom, let me invite anybody, they're not going to. But if you ask them to host it, you know, same thing with this person right here. Hey, would you, we're expanding our business referrals. Would you be willing to invite a couple of friends on at 9 p.m.? And, you know, I'll share the information on these products that you and I are taking. They're, that's how you're going to get them to do something. That's how this line's going to begin to develop. And then all of a sudden you've got 34, you know, this person all of a sudden gets on a weight loss pack. And, uh, you know, let's say, and their mom gets started. Now you're at 250. And what begins to happen here, you can't hardly read my writing, is that 250 plus 34, I'm just going to round this up real quick to wrap this up here shortly, 300 points plus um, this person has 90. So now we're at about 500 points. Now we're telling this person, hey, guess what? You got 500 points here. Or you're at 450. We got stories of just in our team, Alan does plenty of them and Nicole and others on this call. Chelsea, you know, is calling somebody on the way this past week while we're down in St. Augustine. Hey, you're at 434 points. Do you want to get to 500? You know, and it didn't make a big difference, but guess what? They wanted the commission. They want every bit helps. And they said they gave them a goal to go for. So they went for five. Now they're super excited. Their commission went from three to five. And now this, this, this um, month, Chelsea's already got Zoom's plan. They're going to end up going to, um, they got a couple more Zoom's plan. They're going to end up going to a thousand. See? And so now this person has a thousand points. You see how this is beginning to happen? And now seeing is believing and it's getting more exciting. I do another Zoom and now the points are starting to build up. So what, what I'm trying to say, and, and by the way, when you get down here, you want to be as deep as fast as you can go with Zooms. As deep as fast as you can go. Because hey, the deeper it is, the faster, exciting, all these people get excited. Yes. Um, I have a question. Okay, yep. so I know when you do, I, I've heard plenty of Zooms, okay? And you know how at the end you'll do uh, the ABC, pick ABC and talk yep. to the person who invited you? Okay, so if you're doing a, a Zoom for somebody who is not really, they love their breakfast pack, but that's it. They're willing to do a Zoom for you. How are you going to end that Zoom? Because they're not going to be able to go back probably and take care of their people who are on the call. So how are you going to close that call? I'm just curious how you would do it differently. That's a, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, and that is, that is important to be cognizant of obviously like you are that it's, it's going to be different that ending depending on who's on it um what i would do i think chelsea does a really good job of this and maybe chelsea wants to speak up on this but she does a good job better than me at getting a little q a going at the very end um chelsea do you, do you want to comment on that and inviting in them into the healthy living group okay you have to invite them so a great idea if it's a club member is you go ahead at the very end and you ask them, hey, you know, I'd like, to, are you on social media? Let me, let me friend you and I'll invite you into our healthy living group. You know, or if you're interested in learning more about the business, I'll invite you to the business group and I can send you a link to that. Chelsea, do you want to comment on that? Yeah. Can you hear one? me? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Hear you. Um, all right. I'm in Hobby Lobby. <laughs> We're birthday shopping, listening to the Zoom too. Um, Reagan, Reagan, go say hi. Say hi, Daddy. Hi, this is the birthday girl turning six. Okay, so yes, the um, the end of the Zoom is that what you were mentioning? Yes, yes. Yeah. And mom's asking specifically about if you have a club member who is not going to follow up and enroll people. How do you help them do that? Um. So yeah, what I what I suggest doing is. First of all, at the end, you were mentioned the questions. I heard that part is, um, you know, I kind of, I like to kind of prep maybe one or two people that are on the call, like to kind of start the questions. Um, but one of the tricks is, is just say, hey, does anybody have questions? And then you're just silent, even if it's just awkward silence. Um, and it always gets somebody to, you know, start talking. Um, and then another thing that I really um, encourage is how, how to follow up is using really the text that you already have. Um, and I always say at the end, I say, okay, the below you'll see, or the slide that we just said, if you'll comment below, are you an A, B, or C? You know, C is that no thank you. And, you know, I tell everybody, look, it's, it's about relationships for us. We're building a relationship. You do not have to be part of, you know, 
neo life to be our friend, to be, you know, part of even this, you know, healthy living community. What we want to do is just leave you with information that will inspire you to live healthier. And then asking them, you know, hey, can you please comment or text the person that invited you and let them know, are you a, you ready to get started? B, do you want to talk more about the business um, or a C? And so I think that really kind of helps to, um, give them uh, the okay to you know let us know they're not interested yes okay so yes I get that part and I know how if I have people at my house two or three people you know you can casually go through all that and get them on Facebook and all that but on zoom it just feels like you're on tv and you you have to be more efficient so let's say you just have three or four people you're not a big Zoom where you have to send them to someone else, but you just have two or three people and you know your friend who invited them can't do the closing. They can't mm-hmm. do it. So you have to do it right there on the Zoom. You can't say, go ask the person who invited you because you know that person isn't going to do it. Yeah. So, how are you um, so I just start there? Convert- yeah. I would just suggest is starting you starting the conversation and uh, right there on the Zoom. A, a lot of times what I find with these club members who aren't, they don't know where to go from there is I just, you know, I start the conversation um, and ask them, you know, hey, so after hearing the information, where's your interest level? And, um, and then go from there. I mean, it, it really much, it, I've never come into the problem that it doesn't like flow. A lot of people are really embracing Zooms and they're really enjoying um, almost connecting that way. Yes, it is like TV, but it's interactive. So um, I mean, I, I think, you know, one thing is, is, I mean, that comment section is valuable and just that conversation and really being bold at the end and asking people, Hey, you know, even I've even called people out, you know, Hey, Marjorie, after hearing this, what did you think of it? Where is your interest level? You know, I've seen Louie do nice that. Nice hearing that you're being bold. <laughs> Make the bubbles go. Thank you, Chelsea. For being well, bold. hey, then this is my person. thing: is if somebody is A, not bold, if somebody, if we are not bold, somebody else will be. And Josh and I see that often. We even we've lost, you know, some people who would be on our products because we were not bold. Somebody else is going to be bold. Are you going to be bold? I would yeah, just like yeah. to add that I do that on my Zoom calls. So I will call out people on my Zoom calls, um, especially if they've reached out to me about certain health issues, like if they're diabetic or whatever their health issue might be, I might be like, oh, so-and-so, um, what did you think about the information about the shakes? Because I know that you were really interested about you know, regulating your glucose levels. And um, I like to do that because it does keep people engaged or during the call, keeping them engaged by asking someone whose screen might be off. Hey, so-and-so, like, are you still with me? Are you still here? You know, how are you doing? Is this information helpful to you? Does anyone have any questions so far? Like taking those breaks in between instead of just going straight through. So just wanted to add that off of Chelsea, like piggyback off of Chelsea. The the other thing I found is even if it's not a club member, that's great, Rebecca. Thank you. Great input and ideas. Um, And if it's, even if it's not a club member, I found, I did a training for on this for um, international sales team you have to follow up with even promoters that you're doing it for. Because I found people work hard to get people to the event and then they don't follow up afterwards. And so I set the expectations. And if I don't do that, I find I don't get as good a results. But if I follow up afterwards, great job, fantastic. Hey, please let me know in your follow-ups tomorrow how that goes. And when I set the expectation, then they do it. If I don't, they will intend, like I've done plenty of times, you know, in boots, I've worked boots for a whole 10 days and done lousy follow-up afterwards. I mean, it's just sickening to think about. Worked my tail off, did an amazing job, and then didn't follow up for two weeks or three weeks or worse. And what I needed was a coach above me to just look out for my interest and say, hey, provide a little accountability. Great job on that. You killed it. You crushed it. Give me some updates and let me know how's it going as you follow up with that. And that's our job as leaders, as facilitators, as coaches to help bring out the best in our team. They actually want it, whether they ask for it or not. I think we all want it if we're in this business to succeed. Yes, Alan. I want to just say I um, I love Marjorie's question. I love everything you've shared, Josh. It's right on point. Chelsea added some golden nuggets right on point. 
uh, bold, being bold and all that. Rebecca as well. Again, what I'm going to say is, is just going to, I want to say I agree with everything that's been said. Um, I will just add that that question is a really good one that Marjorie asked. And I think we really should have our head wrapped around the answer before we get to that point or we've done a lot of work and we get all the way to the bottom of the ninth inning, the most important part of this whole thing. And we need to have the answer to that question. So the only thing I would add is that hasn't already been said is, you know, there, it isn't black. Some, what I want to say is black and white, and I'm going to get to that. But before that, there's some gray. Is there three people on that this club member has invited that we don't know, that I don't know? I don't have any relationship with them. I'm not connected to them on Facebook. I don't know them. That was the context of Marjorie's question. They're not building a business, so they're not going to follow up and help the person get started maybe. And especially if we know they're a really shy person and they're just not that personality type, they're not going to probably follow up. And even it's going to be scary to them to even follow up and ask their friend, so what did you think of it? What do you think? Are you, know, are you interested at all in this, getting started on the products? They if we know that, then we need to know, have a plan. And the variables come in for me is, do they, did these three people have their cameras turned off the whole time? In the beginning, did they not want to engage with me when I was trying to say hello and start conversation? Or are they engaging? Are their cameras on? There's just so many variables. When I ask, is there questions at the end? You know, and I want, I'm thanking them. For, and I love the silence. Yes, stay silent. See, give people a chance to answer. I love that advice. Whoever said that, Chelsea, I think. Um, but anyway, if you're silent and they're silent and their cameras are off and they're not engaging, I'm not probably going to go one by one. So what do you, you know, so-and-so who won't even say hi to me, won't turn on their camera. So are you ready to get started? You know, I'm probably not going to do that. But what I know for sure, I'm, but I would, I want to try to do that as Chelsea and different ones talked about, if someone will have some kind of communication with me, any kind, then I want to be bold and, you know, ask them what, what might've stood out. Hey, so Chelsea, what stood out to you? Josh, what stood out to you? I'm curious. You know, and I love Rebecca's advice. If you know their health condition, which the contest of Marjorie's question is we don't probably know their health condition because we don't know them. And so the one thing that's clear to me though, is always, 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 it's like, Hey, well, there are no questions. And obviously I can't get any dialogue going here is, you know, we'd love to connect with y'all on Facebook. Feel free to send me a friend request. Um, would love to answer any questions you might have. I realize, you know, you may have questions. You may want to talk to somebody that's been using the products a little longer than Mary has here who, who invited you um, that may or may not have the answers to your questions, but I'm happy to try if you want to ask me directly and not in a group setting like this. And basically I'm going to open the door to communicate with me. And then I'm going to go back to the host and say, Hey, can I get the names of all the, the, the names as they appear on Facebook? <laughs> can I get the names of all those people, those three people that were there? I'd love to reach out and thank them for joining. I'd love to just send them a short note and a friend request. And I'm going to proactively try to connect with them, even though I've invited them to connect with me so they can get answers. Like that's a given for me. Done and done hundred percent of the time. I don't have to think about that. I don't get that to video on video off. And then if I can, again, do some of these other things on the spot, um, to help somebody make a decision, you know, or move that direction. Of course, I want to do that too, but that's a variable to me. That can't always happen. I don't feel like in a natural, normal, healthy setting, yeah. depending on your relationship with the club member, depending, there's just a lot of variables going on there. That's super. Oh, that's a great way to wrap yes. that. Um, Alan, that was very, very good. Thank God Thank for you. social media. I mean, it's made this game. You can't always connect with everyone, but most people you can, it's made this so much easier to follow up. <clears throat> uh, Johnny? Yeah, I wanted to ask, because um, I don't have a ton of experience with this particular situation, but as everybody was talking, I was curious if you guys thought it might be a good idea, even if like, you know, you say, hey, follow up with the person who invited you or whatever. Chances are, I mean, maybe your guys' Zoom meetings are a lot bigger than mine, but there's not like hundreds of people on there. There's probably just 10 or less, maybe, I don't know. But if you kept, if you still said that, and then you reached out to those people, the people that you knew that were on the call and just said, Hey, when they reach out to you, let me know. And we can three-way call or whatever. That way you still have that point of contact with that person through their friend that you know, but then also that's, wouldn't that be a chance for you to show how kind of simple it is to sign somebody up and maybe show how duplicatable the business is 
if you could show somebody who maybe wasn't interested before in building a business, but they are on a call with you and their friend, and you say, wow, that was a really easy five minute conversation. I, I could totally do that. You know, would, would that be a good idea to try and kind of do it with them? Or, I mean, I'm sure it would depend on the person, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, I was just talking to LaVon, Vaughn a lot yesterday, who's, you know, three Ruby and, and developing and into four Ruby right now, do, crushing it. And uh, she does a lot of three ways, you know, a lot of three ways. Uh, I do three ways, but uh, I like doing more and more three ways over Facebook Messenger just because of my busy schedule and trying to connect with people. And that's something that we don't all have to be on at the same time, but we're all in the same thread. But yeah. I agree with you. Any, anyone else want to comment on that? Oh, I agree. Um, but I, I do think when you're in a three-way, that's a whole lot easier because you have a lot more knowledge and connection on what's going on. It's just when it goes to a large Zoom and you have different people inviting to the Zoom and different, totally different backgrounds and totally different needs and it's hard to just in five minutes to connect with everybody. So Alan, I really love the ways you gave to go back and be able to be in the three ways after that, to go back and be able to a two way. You actually can, you gave ideas on how to create three ways out of the larger meetings and mm -hmm. that's doable. So thank you. One, yeah. one thing I'll add is it's just, it's so cool. I mean, I got a message uh, five days ago. I'm still trying to connect with the guy. But out of the blue, this guy on Messenger says, hey, uh, I want to talk to you about your business, what you do. I want to learn more. I'm like, "Who?" the name kind of looked familiar, but I really didn't know who it was. So I had to scroll back up through Messenger to the top to the first message we had, I had sent him when I sent him a friend request to find out who he was and how I knew him. And by reading my own message to him, that's how I knew. That's my notes. Uh, for future forever for as long as Facebook's around anyway and he was a guest of somebody at a health talk same scenario and I had right away reached out friend requested him and um and I, that wasn't one where I followed up with him or thought that I needed to follow up with him and it didn't but it still connected us to where he had a way to find me um about a year later it was about a year later that's awesome. Super. Hey, y'all, before I forget, this is another way. The Neolife T sample card is a beautiful way to get people to schedule a Zoom with you. Hey, tea time on me, right? I mean, how many times have we met people for coffee and bought them coffee? So now what we can do is send this beautiful thing for $5.99, which that's going to be less than it's going to cost me to meet somebody for coffee. And, and, and Lord knows I've done that back in the day when you know, all I could afford to do was get them a coffee and just say, and barely could do that. Right. But, but it was, it paid off. It paid off though. I couldn't afford not to meet them for coffee, you know? Um, but now for $5.99, I can say, Hey, I'd love to meet you for tea time on me. I'll send you, uh, a, uh, I want a tea sleeve, my favorite tea drink. I'll mail it out to you. What's your address? And now it's a beautiful presentation and ask them for 30 minutes to meet with them and share with them, you know, tell you a little bit about this tea. Love to share with you some products that have really impacted our family's health. May, may or may not be of interest to you. Love to meet you for 30 minutes, right? And how can you say no to that? You're giving them a gift. Okay, I have another question. I'm sorry to be so behind the times on using media. But, um, okay, so when you do the tea thing, I can see huge benefits with that. And I haven't been good at using the tea thing yet. Um, but, I mean, do you schedule it? Do you give them time to get the tea sample and actually do tea? I mean, how, okay. I mean, no, I know you don't have to wait for them to get it. But... How many people want to wait for that? How many people just want to go ahead and have the meeting and the tea come later? I mean, what statistically should we try to go at? I mean, obviously let them make the decision, but I'm just curious about experience so far. Well, just began this. So I don't know if there's a few people in my success team that are just starting to do this. Um, so it's, it's fresh. If there's anybody who has experience, speak up on that. But I, I'm suggesting they do it the next week. 
That way you have a, you have a week to get it to them. And you know, if you start doing this actively, your sketch like Chelsea's schedule with Zooms is already full. So people have to wait in line to get a Zoom with her. I, I know it's that way with Alan and Nicole Blaine. So it's and this will be true for a senior manager. As soon as we start getting busy planning this and be intentional about it, our schedule is going to fill up quickly. So waiting for scheduling tea, you know, coffees the next week. I've been doing that since day one, scheduling coffees out a week or 10 days, two weeks out. So now, I don't think that necessarily if you meet them at 9 p.m. in the evening for a cup, for tea, I don't think they're, I would not encourage them to have a tea at 9 p.m. In that case, I would just go over it, tell them a little bit about it, the break, maybe play the breakfast pack video, tell them my story, and then encourage them to try it the next morning. Josh? Yep. That's really good. Uh, one other way to do some, some contacts and stuff is uh, last Monday, I went to my doctor's office to weigh myself after the detox, and my doctor was at the front desk, so I handed her the uh, pamphlet that goes with the detox, the booklet, and told her this is what I was doing. I went to, told her I was going to give it to her nurse, too, and she said, oh, I'll, I'll uh, share it with her. Her nurse wasn't in, interested because she's got supplements that she likes, but the doctor told me that she was busy this Saturday when we had one set up, but I said, well, maybe some other time. And she said, that sounds good. Man, way to go, Scott, creating opportunities at the doctor's office. Cool. Hey, Dad, um, I, I see you have your hand raised. At the end of a meeting, if you uh, sometimes if you don't feel comfortable addressing them as individuals, you can take like three of the names and say, Joan, uh, Mary, Betty, do any of y'all have questions? By just mentioning their names, it will give them boldness to speak up because so many people are shy. Yeah. And if you do it that way, you've taken off the pressure some, but given encouragement for them to mm -hmm. speak up. Great idea. I love it. And also getting on early and if they're on early, starting conversations with them ahead of time starts to build the relationship with the stranger we didn't know yet and will give them more chance of feeling comfortable to talk at the end. Mm, that's good. Y'all, here's a story to, uh, to, to close this out that, um, that, um, uh, Bart shared with me, you probably heard of it, but I may have heard the story I had for, forgotten it though, but it, uh, it really fits the context, I think, as, as business owners taking initiative. Remember I talked about this is the biggest kind of takeaway I wanted to leave with you is hoping that, that you'll make the decision to, to make this a decisive moment, a moment of decision in your business where you say, you know what, I'm going to go for it. Yes, I may be fearful, but I'm going to go for it. I can do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom for sure. I can do that. And so, um, I wanted, so with that in mind, I, I share this story. We got As business owners, we've got to lead out by example, right? The sooner we do it, the faster it duplicates down through our team. And that's why I have absolutely, for I tell you this quick story to end it, I have absolute confidence that anyone can build three and deep. And the deeper you go down, Using Zoom, will do, we'll, you can do this 10 times faster, 100 times faster. I think 10 is super conservative. But I feel like anybody who wants to become a Sapphire director can do that, if you will, just keep on practicing. Doing one-on-ones, meeting people for one-on-ones, getting referrals, meeting them, and all of a sudden it will start to compound. And as I said, 34 points will turn into 100 and 200 and 300 and people start hit, wanting to hit commission levels and the thing just starts taking off. And so, but it starts with us. So with that in mind, it starts with us. Um, I, I shared with you the story that Bart was telling me about how seeing Chelsea's example of doing Zooms has inspired him uh, to want to do, do Zooms now. And um, he then he shared with me Gandhi's story. So Perhaps you've heard this, Gandhi's, uh, he's, well, the mother of a child who was addicted to sugar goes and, and says, you know, if I could just get my child to Gandhi, he, it, my child would listen. So she stands in line for like hours, finally gets to Gandhi and says, 
my child has this terrible sugar addiction that affects his personality, is rotting his teeth and all this. Can you help? And Gandhi said, come back in two weeks. Mom's like, what? So she comes back two weeks later and stands in line again and finally gets to Gandhi. Gandhi looks at the child, looks him in the eye and says, stop eating sugar. It's bad for you. And the mom said, and, and the child's like, you know, like, okay, okay. And the mom looks at Gandhi and says, why couldn't you have told the child that two weeks ago? Why did I have to come back? And Gandhi said, two weeks ago, I was still eating sugar. So <laughs> the point is, that simple story is we've got to lead by example, right? Gandhi had the character to say, I can't tell the child to do something I'm not doing. Now, so you know what? We don't have to be perfect. None of us will become that. But let's go out there and lead by example. And if you'll do that, then you can look at your team and say, hey, let's do Zooms. Hey, let's step outside of our comfort zone. Together, we can do something great. Together, we can achieve our dreams. We can create income with impact. And uh, that's, that's all I had to share. Thank you all for the uh, participation, the input today. Um, I know we went uh, a little bit long, but I think it felt, felt short to me at least in the part of hearing from all of you. So thank you for speaking up and those of you who, who uh, 